Monsieur le Président. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to present you tonight Bill C-224, the, the Good Samaritan Overdose Act. This bill amends the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, that is, the, uh, an assistance with drug overdose. Drug overdoses have a major impact on Canadians. This bill, C-224, will save lives. Let me tell you about Austin Paderick. Austin was a typical 17-year-old high school student. He lived in Heidelberg in rural Ontario. An athlete, Austin was passionate about sports, skateboarding, hockey, and all things outdoors. Those of us who are parents worry about our teenagers and what they get up to with their friends and acquaintances. But when I spoke to Austin's mother recently, there was no worry about Austin. He was a good kid. Austin was just a typical high school student, but we cannot ignore the fact that kids experiment at parties. One night he attended a gathering in rural Ontario, and he made a decision that so many young people make. He took some drugs that night. In the wee hours of that morning, Austin showed signs of distress. He was overdosing. Timely medical attention could have saved his life. But his acquaintances decided not to call 911. They figured they could handle it themselves. They placed him in a bathtub of cold water. When that didn't work, he was put into bed on his side where he stayed until the next morning. When they woke up and checked on him, they thought he looked dead. That's when they called 911. Austin died seven. Austin died seven days later in the hospital with his parents, brother, and extended family at his side. <clears throat> A timely call to 911 could have prevented this tragedy. That is the point of this bill. Let me tell you also about Kelly Best from Saskatoon. He too was a young man full of promise full of hopes and dreams. Another young life tragically cut short. He too took some drugs with a friend and began to overdose. The friend panicked, texted other friends about what to do, and eventually phoned his dad, who immediately called 911. The delay was about an hour. It was fatal. The friend had a small amount of drugs on him and didn't want to go to jail. Austin, Patrick, Kelly Best, two names, one story. <clears throat> Tragic outcomes, they paid the ultimate price. These kids did not have to die. Their story is far too common. Yet it is a story heard over and over and over again like a broken record. Many more names, many more needless, pointless deaths, same story. This needs to stop. Mr. Speaker, when I first heard these stories, I asked a very simple question. Why didn't anyone bother to call 911 earlier? The typical reason is that they were scared scared that they themselves would get into trouble. They did not want to go to jail. They did not want a fine or a criminal record. Fear of prosecution is the largest barrier for people to call for help in an overdose situation. In fact, according to a 
2012 Waterloo Regional Crime Prevention Council report, a study in that report, in the absence of a law such as this, 46% of respondents would either not call for help or would call and run. That is tragic, and that is the point of this bill. <clears throat> and that is why a significant majority of U.S. states have passed legislation of this kind. A study in Washington state where this has been law since 2010, 88% of respondents said they would call for help because of the protection in law. At last count, 36 states plus the District of Columbia have similar legislation on the books. Even states that are prone to a tough on crime <clears throat> approach, such as Alaska and Louisiana, have moved forward with such laws. And recently, Michigan's Good Samaritan law passed unanimously. While the specifics vary slightly from state to state, the underlying intent is the same. For some things are crystal clear. Delay means death. Seconds matter. They also recognize that it's hard to learn from being dead. These laws are a turning point in the way drug policy is understood. Harm reduction actually works. It reduces harm. Every life saved is an opportunity for someone to get the help they need, an opportunity to make better choices and move forward with life. Monsieur le Président au Canada, Mr. Mr. Speaker, in Canada, we lag behind in this regard. Canada, we have been a little slow in helping to stop the harm caused by drug overdose, where people like Austin or Kelly could otherwise have lived. But that is not to say that there have not been calls for Good Samaritan drug laws. The Waterloo report I just noted illustrates the barriers to calling 911 in the event of a drug overdose. It clearly highlights the need. It identifies that criminal justice response is the most significant barrier to calling 911. This report also shows that in the USA, Good Samaritan drug laws are the most widely recommended policy response to alleviating barriers to 911. Laws such as this bill now before this House. This bill provides limited legal immunity from drug possession pro prosecution for people who are, are, who are involved in an overdose incident, who witness an overdose and encourages them to do the right thing, to call for help, to save a life. The work done by Waterloo is echoed in other reports across Canada. The Canadian Drug Policy Coalition also identified this as an issue and has made very similar recommendations. The compelling argument is that most overdoses occur in the presence of others. That wa noted Waterloo study also points to statistics from 2003 showing that 61% of drug overdose deaths occurred in the presence of others. That means that 61% of the time there was someone else there who could call for help. But witnesses far too often hesitate or waver on whether to call for help. In many cases, they just don't. What's even more frightening are cases where people are put in alleyway, alleyways or abandoned on the street or dropped off an emergency with no explanation. In January this year, a report to the British Columbia coroner stressed the importance of a bill such as this. It highlights the critical importance of working to develop strategies to promote calling for help. But more alarming uh, recent news from BC, Dr. Perry Kendall, Perry Kendall, sorry, BC's provincial health officers declared a public health emergency because of the alarming rise of drug overdose deaths. In January alone, In January alone, we had 76 deaths due to drug overdose. At the current rate, Dr. Kendall estimates that BC could have up to 800 drug deaths by the end of this year. That is an average of more than two deaths each day. 
every day in BC alone. This has to stop. These are people's children, people's sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, friends and family. That is what this bill is for. It will not stop the overdoses, but surely but surely we can stem the toll of death. Uh, Dr. Kendall and BC's chief coroner, Lisa LaPointe, both support this bill because it will reduce barriers and it will save lives. And in my own writing, Coquitlam Port Coquitlam School District 43 trustees, Judy Shira and Michael Thomas support this bill. The city of Port Coquitlam unanim unanimously passed a resolution supporting it. And Coquitlam's mayor and many Coquitlam councillors support it as well. I've spoken and met with Coquitlam firefighters, Port Moody Mayor Chief Clay, or Mike Clay, and Port Moody's Police Chief Constable Chris Rattenbury, who in fact sent a video endorsement expressing his own support. Port Coquitlam's firefighters sent a letter of support. First responders agree. Their first priority is to save lives, but they can only do that when they're called. The government of British Columbia's Minister of Health wrote to me expressing importance, the importance of this legislation. And these are among, this is among the growing number of Canadian jurisdictions that recognize that drug overdose deaths are becoming epidemic and need action now to start saving lives. It's time we listen to Canadians. And it's time we take our own advice. In a 2014 report on prescription drug abuse, the House Standing Committee on Health recommended considering Good Samaritan drug overdose legislation. This bill is precisely that. It's simply about saving lives. This bill is about giving people the tools they need to make life-saving decisions in a time of crisis. It will make it okay to call for help. Many members of this House recognize this. That is why the NDP member for Vancouver East seconded the bill, and many more on both sides of the House have rallied behind it. And I thank them all. And I thank them all for the robust support. They are showing that they too want to stop the harm. So I ask all members for their support to demonstrate to all Canadians that we know that lives are worth saving to show that we value life over death uh, and life over punishment, support over fear. Ce project de loi a pouvait... This bill is about removing the fear of calling for help, and by doing so, it will save lives. Mr. President. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Questions and comments? Question uh, commentaire. Uh, the Honourable Member for Vancouver East. Chair, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank also uh, the member from Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam, uh, for bringing this bill to this House. I thank him also for his comments, uh, his heartfelt comments. Um, and I think that uh, for all of us uh, who are parents, um, we can only imagine the pain that a person has to go through for a census loss, for something with a youngster who's going through life, and so often what they do is experiment, and in that process to lose a life. I can imagine the pain and the suffering the person would go through. Uh, having to uh, endure that uh, is uh, something that uh, my heart goes out to every single parent. But with this bill, uh, the member in bringing forward this bill, uh, there is something monumental about that, and it changes the course of things in that there is an opportunity to save a life, and that is the whole purpose behind this bill. And substance misuse, as we know in Vancouver East, is a major issue in my community. Uh, there was a point in time in the early 1990s where there were 1,000 crosses that were planted in a park called Oppenheimer Park. 
Each one of those cross was to commemorate a loss of somebody's brother, somebody's son, somebody's daughter, a life. And we call for harm reduction initiatives, and we fought for it, and it took so long, and we finally got the first North America supervised injection facility. And so to that end, in terms of harm reduction, this is a continuum of that effort. I want to thank the member for bringing this forward. I want to ask him to say to him, what else can we do? How else can we work together collaboratively to extend the measures of harm reduction to ensure that we put evidence first to save the lives? And will he also also work with us to call on the government to uh, repeal Bill C-2. The Honourable Member for Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam. I thank the member for her question, uh, and I appreciate the question. Um, I'm certainly 100 percent in favour of continuing the work on harm reduction. Uh, just last week I did a tour of insight in, uh, in the member's writing, and it was very uh, um, informative. Um, and it is, in passing, I should note that uh, the staff and uh, workers at Insight are also in support of this bill. Uh, I'm aware of C2. Uh, I think it does need a little work, and uh, I certainly would appreciate uh, working with the member and other uh, members to uh, correct um, the problems. Thank you. Questions and comments? Qu'est-ce uh, commentaire? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And first off, let me add my comments in the sense of just expressing um, how wonderful it was to hear such a, a passionate uh, speech on something that obviously means a great deal uh, to the member. And I applaud the efforts that he has put in personally to date in order to get this legislation before us uh, today. He should truly be commended uh, for his efforts. And I always enjoy when we hear real life examples. And uh, the member made reference to Austin. And I am sure that uh, the family and friends that uh, might be following this uh, debate very much appreciate the member's uh, efforts. And maybe if I can just uh, ask him a very basic uh, question, and that is, is there anything else that he would like to, uh, to provide any sort of comment on in regards to just how important this issue is uh, for him, his constituents, and all Canadians? Honourable Member for Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam. Once again, I appreciate the question and the opportunity to respond. Um, certainly, this is a, a issue of, of great importance in my community and in my province, as well as the country as, as a whole. Um, I. I think we all have to just bend our backs to the wheel and keep moving on this kind of issue to keep it moving. Uh, harm reduction is an important uh, direction to pursue and it, it shows real results. Um, we are seeing more opportunities for harm reductions to be, to be uh, employed in our society, more supervised in injection sites, for example. Um, as far as this bill is concerned, on, we are actually putting video messages and other messages of support on my parliamentary website. So any member who wishes to express the, such support in a 30-second video of some kind it, of quality is not an issue, um, we'd be happy to put that up. Thank you. <laughs> 